Siberia, a land characterized by harsh winters and dangerous wilderness, and hiding a secret for tens of thousands of years. Climate change may reveal, in frozen patches of ground, deadly and highly infectious microorganisms that have not seen the light of day even before human civilization began 6,000 years ago. Periodic outbreaks of anthrax, the return of smallpox, the sneaking revelation of a corpse infected with Spanish influenza. What's next? Another COVID-19 pandemic? The Black Death? Both? What do we do if an ancient pathogen revives itself to wreak havoc on society? How do we protect ourselves from zombie viruses hidden just beneath our feet, frozen in the very soil that gets stuck in the treads of our shoes? Let's get into it. While still up for debate amongst those who hate listening to scientists, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's Modeling and International Monitoring continues to find that the ongoing release of greenhouse gases following the Industrial Revolution is contributing to climate change. To some of us, this might not be that surprising. As of now, it's widely accepted we will see an increase of about 1.5 degrees Celsius in the 21st century. And that has many implications for us, and the planet Earth itself. One of the places where the effects of climate change are felt most strongly and earliest is in the Arctic. Current models show that the Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world, and we can observe the earliest effects of this in permafrost regions. Permafrost, a potentially millions of years old frozen layer of soil, has been thawing rapidly as the effects of climate change continue. In Siberia, particularly, where deep permafrost runs beneath almost all of Russia's northeastern regions. Another, more cataclysmic effect can also be seen in Siberia. Large mounds of earth called pingos that form when liquid water freezes and expands, pushing the earth upward into a mound. Typically, when these mounds thaw, they collapse in on themselves. But now, due to the rapid increases in temperature, methane gas builds up in these mounds until the pressure ruptures the mound and they explode in a flurry of flame and frozen rock and soil. However, the main concern for author Jean-Marie Alempic and colleagues in their 2022 study entitled An Update on Eukaryotic Viruses Revived from Ancient Permafrost is not exploding mounds of methane, but the consequences of thawing permafrost on life in these regions. A little smaller than that. There we go. The researchers note that the return of liquid water triggers the metabolic reactivation of numerous soil microorganisms. Basically, as the ice thaws, dead microorganisms once preserved in ice for God knows how many centuries, if not millennia, begin to decompose, releasing more CO2 and methane into the atmosphere. The fear is that this will escalate the release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, speeding up temperature increases in the Arctic, melting the ice caps until we're in either a water world or a Mad Max scenario. I hope the latter. However, Olympic insists that there is a darker, more dangerous consequence of thawing permafrost. Decomposition may worsen the effects of climate change, but their main concern is not that these microorganisms will die as they thaw, but that they'll live. The study suggests that thawing could signal the physical release of live bacteria, or archaea, that have remained in cryptobiosis trapped in deep permafrost isolated from the Earth's surface for up to 2 million years. In layman's terms, frozen bacteria, viruses, and other microbiota can revive and rise again as zombies. As grim as it is, if that's true, then frozen corpses are also a threat. In a time when the world is still dominated by the threat of a viral pandemic, the idea that any pathogen can survive the dead of winter in the coldest regions of the world lying in wait inside the bodies of the dead in the ground is truly shivering. Up until their study, only two live viruses had been found, and it was thought that the viruses couldn't survive the thawing process. But Olympic and their colleagues disagreed, arguing that these zombie viruses posed a very serious public health threat. With this in mind, they went out and sampled permafrost at various depths to see what kinds of microcultures they could find. But the question remains, what did they find down there? And what kind of threat do they pose to us? 
It sounds like a science fiction movie, right? The ancient disease sealed away for centuries comes back to destroy the world? Well, there's good news. Before you pack your bags and get into your backyard bunkers to wait out the apocalypse, the scientists behind this study did their due diligence. Viruses are interesting creatures, insofar as they're not technically creatures, but lines of biological code that hijack real creatures so they can use them to reproduce. Viruses burst the cell they've infected and lies, spitting out bunch of little viral babies. Each species of virus adapts to infect a specific host to reproduce inside of. So a human virus can't infect a dog, and vice versa. Viruses can evolve to survive in different hosts, and it does happen often enough. But scientifically, we would consider them two different viruses at that point. Knowing this, researchers used an amoeba called Acanthamoeba castellani as bait to catch potential revived zombie viruses. So the only viruses they found, this time, can infect amoebas. So there's no threat to people, animals, or crops. Thanks, science! Researchers took various samples of permafrost from nine sites and placed them in petri dishes. These include samples of permafrost from the bank of a river, a woolly mammoth's wool and stomach, and the intestinal content of a Siberian wolf. They then added A. castellani to the dishes and watched to see if anything grew. And oh boy did things grow! The study found viruses that belong to five different clades, aka groups of species that share common ancestors. Pandora virus, Cedret virus, Megavirus, Pac-Man virus, and Pithovirus. The majority of the viruses that researchers found belong to the Pandora virus family, including about 14 new species. Researchers found these viruses in permafrost along the Lena River in Yakutsk, otherwise known as the coldest city on Earth. Many of their samples contained Pandora viruses, but it was also found in one of their oldest, a patch of permafrost dated back 48,000 years. To put that in perspective, the pyramids were built 6,500 years ago, humans first came to North America across the Bering Strait 13,000 years ago, and Neanderthals went extinct only 40,000 years ago. This tiny little virus is 8,000 years older than that. This virus slept through the entirety of human civilization. Everything you know, everything everyone everywhere has ever known, did not exist when this virus was first born out of an infected amoeba in the land before time. Pandora viruses, named after the Greek myth of Pandora's box, is fortunately not dangerous for humans. They are also, interestingly enough, the largest virus ever found. Granted, it's still itsy bitsy teeny weeny, but I've done the research and it is absolutely not wearing a yellow polka dot bikini. Make of that what you will. Another group of viruses researchers discovered belongs to the pithovirus clade, including a new subfamily called Cedret viruses. One was found in the same river researchers found the Pandora viruses in, another was from Kamchatka, and they found another in frost along the Kalima River. They found one more species of pithovirus in a 27,000-year-old sample of permafrost that contained a significant amount of woolly mammoth wool. The authors of the study also note that the prototype pithovirus found in a previous study was dated to about 30,000 years ago. The next virus they found is a species called Megavirus Mammoth. You want to guess why? Yup, because it was found in the same clump of frozen 27,000-year-old mammoth wool. Finally, we come to our personal favorite virus, just for the name alone. Pac-Man viruses are one of the most recently discovered viruses that can infect the giant amoebas the researchers used as bait in their study. They're a distant relative of African swine fever virus, sharing 31 genes. It was found inside of the frozen intestines of a Siberian wolf in a permafrost dated older than 27,000 years. The name Pac-Man virus comes from an older study from 2017, whose authors state that we named it Pac-Man virus because of the broken capsid that we sometimes observed in our first transmission electron micrographs. Basically, they named it after Pac-Man because it kind of looked like him. Science is complicated, but sometimes Pac-Man is just Pac-Man. Now, as we learned earlier, all of these viruses aren't dangerous to people, animals, or crops because of how researchers use giant amoebas as bait. However, the authors insist that the wide variety and number of viruses they found that were able to revive themselves after thousands of years of being frozen suggests that there might be many, many more unknown viruses under the permafrost that could potentially threaten our food, our livestock, or our very lives. They say that 
One can reasonably infer that many other eukaryotic viruses infecting a variety of hosts, much beyond Acanthamoeba species, may also remain infectious in similar conditions. In the movie The Thing, Antarctic researchers uncover a strange creature frozen in the ice and are picked off one by one after it thaws, revealing its shape-shifting nature. Now, obviously, an amoeba infected by a virus is less spooky than a shape-shifting nightmare from beyond the stars, but we would like to know what's down there before we accidentally dig it up. It would have been a much shorter movie if Kurt Russell, after finding the alien, said, I read a paper about this thing. We have to set it on fire. Now. Jean-Michel Clavery, professor of genomics and bioinformatics at the School of Medicine of I Marseille University, for one, is concerned because, as he says, this is the first time we've seen a virus that's still infectious after this length of time. He reiterates the same feelings as other scientists, emphasizing that it's a recipe for disaster. If you start having industrial explorations, people will start to move around the deep permafrost layers. Through mining and drilling, those old layers will be penetrated, and this is where the danger is coming from. Clavery posits that, if it is true that these viruses survive in the same way those amoeba viruses survive, then smallpox is not eradicated from the planet, only the surface. If this is true, he says, then smallpox could become again a disease of humans in modern times. And that would be a terrible nightmare scenario. In the 20th century alone, smallpox took the lives of over 300 million people and was one of the main diseases that decimated indigenous North American populations, killing, by some measures, up to 90% of their population. Olympic echoes this claim, citing another study from 2012 that found smallpox in the preserved soft tissue of a 300-year-old Siberian mummy of a human buried in frozen in permafrost. It's not just smallpox, though, but other viruses as well. In 1999, scientists isolated influenza DNA from the biopsy of a man who died from the Spanish flu back in 1918. However, it's not just viruses that can survive being cryogenically frozen, but bacteria as well. Olympic notes that the periodic return of anthrax epidemics that devastate reindeer populations has been connected to the deep thawing of permafrost layers in hot summers across Earth. Each time an epidemic spreads across their populations, some die and are frozen for months to years. Then, when a hot period arrives, they thaw, spread Bacillus anthracis spores, and begin a whole new epidemic all over again. Anthrax is a bacteria that causes lesions on the skin, flu-like symptoms, fever, nausea, among many other symptoms. The most serious symptoms include sepsis-triggered multiple organ failure and hemorrhagic meningitis aka inflammation of the membranes and fluid covering the brain and spinal cord, which can trigger rampant internal bleeding and death. Anthrax epidemics in Siberia have been recorded as early as 1848, and the 20th century saw repeated outbreaks that affected humans as much as it affected reindeer populations. That said, the thing that frightens public health officials is the more than 7,000 anthrax-tainted reindeer burial grounds scattered across the region threatening to thaw and lead to further loss of life. In addition to that, digging into permafrost is, well, beyond difficult, so many of these burial grounds are relatively shallow, further increasing the risk of outbreak. Even as recently as 2016, an outbreak in Siberia led to the deaths of 2,350 reindeer after a particularly warm summer which indicated to the authorities that thawing permafrost must have contributed. The Russian government were forced to airlift families out of the quarantined regions and begin a massive vaccination campaign inoculating as many wild reindeer as possible, and burning any and all tainted corpses. Unfortunately, by the time all was said and done, dozens of people were infected and a child had died of infection as well. The reality of a changing planet is that we need to prepare now for the problems of tomorrow. Ignoring something because it has not yet affected us personally is no longer an option. The world is more interconnected than ever before, and obviously we all know how quickly disease can spread these days. Whether it's the return of smallpox as a disease that afflicts people across the globe, the second rise of the Spanish influenza, or outbreaks of anthrax, it's clear that thawing permafrost hides more than just frozen soil. Alembic and their colleagues have shown us that it's not only possible, but in fact likely that viruses can live in a frozen state for tens of thousands of years, 
which combined with the diseases that are already being released from our frozen north, bids us a foul omen for the future. But it's not all skull and crossbones, doom and gloom, death and dying. There are things we can do every day to help climate scientists across the world. Little things like minding your water and power usage, choosing to take the bus instead of driving, vacationing at home instead of abroad, and most importantly, petitioning and demanding lawmakers take action and hold polluting corporations accountable for the health of our homes and the world we all share. Because if we don't, soon the world will be perma-fudged. Based on our recent video about a man who faked his death to save his life, we put a poll on Twitter asking, what would you do if you overheard your friend's wife plotting to get him killed? It was all pretty close, but what was really surprising is that so many of you would do nothing. Luckily, the guy who was actually in that situation didn't just do something. He did all three things and came up with an ingenious plan to bring the wife to justice. 